Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Level Up tonight. I've got a whole spiritual orchestra going here. <laughs> the only thing I was thinking, you know, this is pretty long, right? But I thought, oh, I need a didgeridoo. So I'm looking for a didgeridoo. I don't know if I get a didgeridoo shipped in here. <laughs> But we are going to we're going to invoke rain tonight, and it's going to be great. I love this. It's my chroma key bowl from Sean and Brielle, the uh, heart chakra bowl. I need to um, really put our guard, our full guard tonight. I'm going to tell you a story that Melissa just uh, sent me uh, shortly before we began here. That, um, uh, oh, there's Mary. There's Mary right there. I've got my uh, iPad set up over here so I can see who the Facebook comments are. So that's great. Um, Let's see. I think that's Mary. No, that's Nina Marie. I think there's Mary. There we go. She's in there. Good evening, everybody. So um, I'm going to move right on into this here. Let's do some protecting first. And actually, let me read you why put a podcast out this afternoon from Fred. And at the beginning, we did an ohm together, one ohm. And it was, it's really cool. I mean, it sounds great. And Melissa wrote this this afternoon, just, just within the hour. She said, and share something that just happened. She said she has been using the podcast app on her phone all weekend without incident. She pulled up the latest episode with Fred and started listening. The ohm came up, the chant came up, and she said the app just closed, shut down, shut off, could not open the app. Tried to open the podcast app again, tried five more times, the app was not going to open. She said she felt a, she has felt low energy since the minute she woke up this morning. So she decided to do three ohms herself. Perfect. <laughs> that three to one ratio. And she tried to open it again and it kept going shut. So she had an errand to run. So she left the house. Podcast app worked fine in her car. No issues. Immediately when I got home, I grabbed some sage and found a clearing energy chant music and put it on YouTube and played it while my sage and saged her entire home. Commanded anything evil or negative to leave and asked the angels and guides and her mom and her ancestors to protect her and help her clear this out. While I was trying to light the sage, the lighter even stopped working for a few minutes. She has Alexa upstairs, and she said it's currently playing on a loop of positive music and clearing out the energy. After she did that, she opened up the podcast app and listened to the rest of the podcast. <laughs> like, wow. And you know how much of this has been going on. So let's... Um... Oh, this is great. Love seeing you guys in here. Love seeing you guys. This is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Found that background. I thought, oh, that's beautiful. That's springtime, right? So I am going to put my hat on. I've been doing this, been doing this all weekend. And it's just symbolic of saying I'm protecting my pot meal. Looks kind of funky, but I'm going to put it on. And the other thing I'm going to do is light a candle. You might want to do some of these things along with. And um, 
preferably white and preferably if you have one that is energy infused, this one is even better. So just several of these things that you might want to do along. Uh, I can't burn in here, but uh, I can spray. So I have some sage spray. Some great sage spray. So I'm going to squirt it up because I want it to fall on all of us. There's some for you. Just protecting protecting what we've got going here. I don't know many tunes. I don't know any tunes on this, but we'll just make some sound. Let's do three ohms together. Let the sound out. have been soothing and calming for your soul. Some pretty incredible times we're living in. <clears throat> uh, Melissa, again, said that there's a group of you who are chatting on the side and uh, have been talking about this, about the energy. So we have to kind of be careful because obviously we don't want to create more of something and yet we acknowledge what is there. And that's exactly what this is, is acknowledging what is there. So here are just a couple of thoughts that are reminders. This is nothing new. It's nothing huge. It's nothing earth shattering or revolutionary, but it is when you're in the middle of these challenges. One of the points that I wanted to make, the first one, nobody knows. So look, there are so many people on social media now that are getting on here and they're saying, oh, this is good, you know, we're moving to this, or we're moving to that, or we're, this is going to happen, or the elites are going to do this, or that, you know, I'm going to put this example up here just because I don't want it floating up on that microphone. I've got an audio book in the oven right now, <laughs> all my tools. Um, the, you know, it's like with this certainty that they know what's going on. And I'm just like, well, congratulations. Because this is the first time in history that anybody has been able to definitively say what is going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> it's like, take that with, I think, a grain of salt. That when people are saying that they know what is going to happen, no, they don't. They might be forecasting something, you know, the best weatherman is only 50-50. So the one thing we can control is ourself. And please, let's not forget that right now. We are 
co-creators every day that we get up and have breath. And we are still, I know everybody in this group is in a place where they are free to co-create. So let's just don't forget that. Let's wake up every day not acknowledging what people who don't know say is going to happen, what the news says is going to happen, what the politicians say is going to be next. Nah, they don't even know. They can't figure out how to tie their shoes. So let's be quick to purge like Melissa did anything. I mean, like instantly get rid of, eliminate anything that does not serve and then be quick to go to love. Now, let me just, we don't do this a lot on Sundays, but you can listen to this tomorrow, but I did want to just show you. Um, you cannot see my cursor. Okay. I didn't know if you'd be able to or not. This is tomorrow morning's sunrise chart with astrology. And basically, if you look right there at the nine o'clock position, you see the sun, that's the circle with the dot, and then you see right above it is Mercury. And then above that is Saturn. Oh, and then right below the sun is Neptune. So you see all those four right there together? That's a big part of the of what you guys are feeling. Because Mercury, tomorrow morning when the sun goes up, Mercury is right above it, above the horizon. That's the sunrise point right there, you're, what you're looking at. And Mercury is the representative of communication. So there's this big desire right now to be heard and to hear, to speak. And with Neptune so close, so, so Mercury is going to collide with the Sun and Neptune. All three of those are going to stack up here over about the next four days. So, I mean, we are thick in this energy right now. And Ray Merriman on Saturday's podcast for Fun Astrology talked about, if you look down, go down from there to about the 8 o'clock position, you see two planets, two things there right at 14 degrees. That's Jupiter on the bottom and Chiron on the top. Chiron is green and Jupiter is kind of that gray color. And then that's Venus below them. But particularly Jupiter and Chiron are, Ray mentioned this war thing because it's in Aries. And it's right next door, one sign over from all that stack at the sunrise point. So that's creating this tension right there. And Jupiter magnifies things. So there's more tension. All right now, go down to the 6 o'clock position. And you see a red circle with an arrow coming up. It looks like the male sign. Well, that's Mars. And it's in the sign of Gemini, which is kind of a divided sign. And Pisces, where the sun is, the sunrise spot over there at 9 o'clock, that's also a divided sign. So you see all this torn conflict, and Mars is in a square, so it means it's 90 degrees moved away from the sunrise over there, and that's a tense pull, tense feeling. And then we would be remiss if we didn't mention Pluto getting ready to move into Aquarius, which it basically already is. And I've got this thing I'm going to do on one of the podcasts this week where I'm I listed out all these protests going on all over the place. That's Pluto moving into Aries, uh, into Aquarius. I mean, we haven't seen anything yet. It's like, so here is this kind of this, and Saturn came in so hot. I mean, how many people have Saturn is up there at zero degrees, just above the sunrise point there uh, in Pisces. So Saturn is saying, if you forget that I'm in here, I will make you know that I am in here. I mean, it came in hot. How many people have lost jobs or um, died this week? And I, I mean, we talked about this last week quite a bit. So this is, it's all connected together. 
it's all tied together. And we elaborate on that more tomorrow on the Fun Astrology podcast. But that's, in essence, why you're feeling the way you're feeling is because there's just this knot, this big knot of energy. And Saturn has come in manifesting itself very strongly. That sign change was, boom, powerful on Tuesday. So, um, do this. All right. So that's um, that's what's going on. All right. Now, tonight, there was homework <laughs> for our meeting tonight. And I hope you came prepared. I hope you had some time today. If you saw that video that I did earlier this morning about tonight and just bring two or three things, one thing, two things, three things, a couple of things that you wanted to manifest. Because what I wanted to do was shift the focus of these Sunday nights. We're still going to meditate, still going to do everything we do. Still going to send love out to the planet. Oh, we're not going to forget about that. But I thought that in light of what all is going on, that what we might do is focus a little bit more on what we want. So in other words, we're going to get into the we are creating mode versus we are responding mode. See, that's the idea behind this. Let's don't react to everything going on around us. Let's create our own reality. So the homework was to bring a few things that uh, you wanted to see in your life by this time next Sunday. And we will focus on those. So these are short to midterm things. Now, if you want to focus on a big thing, I mean, there are no rules here. But just the idea is let's take some little baby steps. Because I really honestly do think that the... Uh, veil of things manifesting is pretty thin right now. I mean, I had these two things that uh, one is not in a podcast yet. Just found out about it this week. So I got the Jeep out of jail. You heard that story. If not, it's in subconscious mind mastery. And that was a pure manifestation. And then where I am up here, I was seriously contemplating whether I was going to have to move because about 20 miles east is a paper mill. And when the, uh, basically when the temperature changed and it got colder, the smoke from the paper mill fills this valley. And it is toxic and obnoxious. And that thing has been there for a hundred years Three generations of families over there work in that paper mill. It is the whole town over there of Canton, North Carolina. And they announced on Monday, I'm, I have taken just a personal internal, uh, you know, they, they've gotten in trouble so many times for the air quality and then they dump stuff in the river and kill the fish. I mean, it's just, there's just no excuse for it in my book. No excuse whatsoever. And Monday was announced that they are closing the plant by June. And I'm like, I even mentioned this when I recorded that podcast with Fred that's just posted today that I, um, I mentioned this to him. He said, you got to get out of there. You got to breathe clean air. Well, in the summer, it's been clean. In the summer, it's been fine because the prevailing wind kicks it on out. It doesn't even come up here. But... Um, it's, um, it is, uh, loving this chat you guys have got going on here in Facebook. It's mostly Facebook. Um, there's Sarah with us and, uh, Michelle, that's awesome. Glad you're here. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, you guys, Alyssa, would you put in the chat, on Tuesday nights, Alyssa does an astrology kind of meditation, or at least a meditation. So if you would like a Tuesday night gathering, Alyssa, if you would drop in there when that is, I'd like to put that up and, and point people to that. When and how to find, right? All the, all the details, time zone, everything. Um. 
so the the veil I think is really thin right now. So this is what we're going to be focusing on here, and um, I love this slide. <laughs> Talk about flying the jet into the matrix. Don't you want to do that? Doesn't that just sound adventurous? Oh my goodness, that just sounds awesome. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Put your manifestations in the chat. And I know sometimes you don't want to uh, put stuff out there that has not manifest. And I firmly believe that. So if you don't want to, just disguise it. I, or don't, or don't. Again, no rules here. Just what I do think is, though, if we all together have something that we can lock on to, where we can support you in something, that's the idea here, is how can we support you? So whatever phrasing or wording or whatever comes to mind on that, if you would uh, want to put it in the chat, it just kind of makes it public to say, hey, I'm making a stand for this. And then as we start to do this, uh, oh, okay, here's what Melissa was saying. She'll put the information for her meditation in the Facebook group. So if you're not in the Facebook group, uh, you're just coming through YouTube. Uh, it's on Tuesday nights and it's on her channel, but I just can't remember what the channel is. So uh, Facebook group will have that. Um, so. Then we're going to read what the other people put in. So, so scroll back if you're on uh, Facebook. I'll try to put these up. So let's just start putting these up now. And um, that way you can see who is going after what. And then when we come back around, I'm going to ask you to pick five people that you will stand for their manifestation when we're doing our meditation. So we'll just look at these as you put yours up. And then the idea of circulation. I think this is so strong. So we're going to approach this from the position that where you say, my issue manifests as I stand for others' issues or their manifestation to be fulfilled. What I am putting into the universe fulfills as I circulate and stand not for my fulfillment, as I shift my focus to what others want. Let me see if I can see here on this. All right. This is right here. Uh for the future. That is Lisa Hollis right there. That's Lisa Hollis. I command clarity and direction for the future. I love how you phrased that. Here's Carrie in Australia. Good morning, Carrie. I'll have $500 by next Sunday. Here's Melissa's. I want better communication from my partner, showing me more love. and using a side job and leadership skills for additional income. Daily time and space for spiritual practice. Yes, exactly. Me time. <laughs> Along with the energy to do it, I know. <laughs> I feel you. I will love and support others this week. Awesome. Confidence, job security, and being able to help more people. That's from Esmon. All right. This is Caroline Horn. Hi, Caroline. Glad you're here. Full physical health and releasing the desire for unhealthy, toxic foods, products, and environments. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, I'm trying to see these Facebook where the 
I'm not sure who this is. Oh, this is Diane Holman. This is Diane Holman. New customers in my direct sales business of all natural ingredient supplements. So we will not have to go back into the workforce. I'm losing the. Here's Diana manifesting a new direction of my or direction of my spiritual. She's looking for spiritual direction. Harmony. Is that you, Harmony? Love and abundance. Be specific. Be really specific. Connecting to Mercury. Communication. Alyssa has a powerful message. She's starting to get out to the to the world. I know Sarah's got some stuff going on for sure, so we'll stand for for Sarah. Oh, nice sale of my house! All right, so you see, I just wanted us to stand with people as they're. All right, now here's the process. And I'll keep putting these up. This is Cheryl from Canada. This is Wendy McDonald. Good. Good, Darren. Leading my personal and business life with intention and health, happiness, and wealth. Really drill down on what that is. Be specific with these. It's one of the things of manifestation. Be specific. I want a green, da 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 da, da or better. Then you say, or better. You know, I like that uh, folks are asking for money that is achievable. That's good. Here's Sarah's. I'll let you all read that. So first of all, we're going to see it as real in our mind. That's the first thing is you create the thought of it happening. Then you accompany that with the emotion. You feel it in your body. And I really want to encourage Sarah. She is working now. We'll, we'll catch up with her in a, in a bigger way, but she's working now at a community market that is selling high vibration materials. And they have a, um, an event space and she is coordinating the event there is that's as best as i understand it and i thought i we were i was communicating with her yesterday and we said well then we should think about a summer event or early fall event in kansas city it's as central of a place as you can get in the united states and we could support kara we could support uh, sarah in this work so we're going to look at doing that we got you back, girl. Hey, Robin, glad you're here. Glad you are here. We need to catch up, too. Got a lot of you guys that need to catch up. Here's one from Nancy. This would be big for her. This would be big for Nancy. Y'all stand with her on that. Make her one of your five. <laughs> Got a lot of people pulling for you, Nancy. All right, now, here's then a lot of you have put in here, command. This is like no fooling around. Command it to appear at the right time. And here's what I would suggest. In the name of, and whatever feels right to you. It could be in the name of highest source. It could be in the name of the universe, in the name of God, in the name of... Jesus, in the name of 
Yahweh, in the name of Buddha, in the name of whatever represents highest source to you. I command dot, dot, dot. Be specific. So for those of you who have asked for things like abundance, define what abundance means. Because remember, if you say abundance, the universe might manifest something, you know, like here's what Ray Merriman was saying, that Jupiter down there at about the eight o'clock position that's sitting with Chiron, Jupiter magnifies and we think of Jupiter being positive, but what if that is a war motif? See, what if that is the aggressive side of Aries? You want more of that? So abundance could be abundance of who knows, right? Let's don't even go there. So get real specific. Then we thank source for the privilege of co-creating. And then we're going to focus on somebody else's manifestation and then repeat this five times. Now, let's talk about environment and this kind of thing, because this has come up a couple of times. And while I'm doing this, I will put uh, some of your other things up here. All right. One of the things that I've seen, and, and Melissa's story, uh, if you didn't catch it earlier, Melissa Granzo was starting to listen to the latest Subconscious Mind Mastery podcast that had Fred Dodson on it that I did this week and released it today. And we started his interview with an ohm. And Melissa said that she has been listening to podcasts all weekend. And she also said that she and several other people in our group here have been feeling wonky energy this weekend. So she put the thing on and she said that now she's been listening to podcasts all weekend. When it got to that ohm, the podcast app shut off on her phone and would not reopen. She tried five times. So she said she had to run an errand. She went out to the car. The podcast app worked just fine. So she came back and cleared her space. This is real stuff. With Mary's daughter, there's stuff that Mary um, has. Yeah, be real careful. Be specific. Good point. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, there we go. Like that, Diana. Good revision. Nice. Nice. Um, Brandy, thank you for asking. I am creating the selling of the van. Um, this was something that I asked the horary the other day about. I love that van and I love traveling around in it. Uh, it does wear me out. I get tired after a certain period of time. And, um, I asked the horary chart and it looked like a window of about 17 weeks here which, you know, could give me some time to tool around in the summer. But look, I came back and sat down with a mind map program that I have, and I listed out all of the things that I want to get done. And right now, where I am is focusing my efforts on expanding this work into so many different areas. The radio show that I was working on in Dallas I delivered all the stuff for that this week, and it continues to air for a couple of more weeks, but it is done as far as I'm concerned. Everything has been delivered. I don't have to do anything else, and that was a big deal. So my space opened up tremendously with that. And Fred sent a book right about like a couple of days after. So it's like, Yes, this is what I am focusing on, and I have so many new directions to go in, and I need to be operating at my highest and best peak efficiency all the time, and that is to operate more from a home base. So I did ask the, I, I looked at the horary, um, and so mine is to uh, find the right person 
for Lord Jupiter, and they may not call it that, but it is a wonderful tool. It is a wonderful ban. Uh, I wish I could be more efficient in it, doing what I do. But, you know, if you saw this, I've got two lights set up. I've got a teleprompter on this thing. I've got an iPad over here. I can't do all that in the van. And this is a better environment. I couldn't have all these things that we started the meeting with. You know, it's just, it's little things like that that I just keep bumping into. So that's mine. Um, all right, this is great. You guys are coming back on rewriting these things. Now, I want you to put in the name of, and I'm going to tell you why. I'll tell you why. Good, Melissa. Clean that space. Thank you, Robin. Ah, I like this one too. Bob Proctor's, I am so happy and grateful now that I dot, dot, dot. That's a good one. That's a good way to do it too. That's a really good way to do it. I am so glad you mentioned that. Thank you. Because I just, I love that. All right, good. Funds to be released from a sale. See, you could you could do what I did with the with the uh, smoke plant down here. Is I just saw, I don't know, I don't know what I did. I just saw. So, like getting the jeep out of jail, the podcast I commanded that. But the smoke thing, I just was like, this is just. I think what I did is like, this is just wrong. This just doesn't belong here. This needs to go away. And you think about, could one person do that? I'm going to be just crazy enough to think that, yes, one person could do that. Why not? All right. And this is a good, this is a good. So if some of you want to even revise again to say in the name of, and you don't have to, I'm just saying this is exercise. This is totally exercise. Here's a platform available. It gets you in the thinking mode of in the name of. Because if we simply command, here's what I'm thinking. Oh, this is getting into future podcast stuff. But let's go to the book of Genesis in the Bible. And I know some that might, you know, let's just let's just play with a story because Liz Green calls it the Genesis myth, the creation myth. Okay. It, it's either a real story and God spoke as stated, or it's a depiction of, or it's a suggestion of what we can do. The very thing that's interesting in this is if you get into the Hebrew language, God, ultimate source, what we often typically say as universe, is always used the word Yahweh. That is ultimate source, highest source, God, Yahweh. But in the book of Genesis, which begins with the words, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That word for God is not Yahweh. It's Elohim. And Elohim in Hebrew is translated properly God. But Elohim can be translated singular or it can be translated plural. And when you translate it plural then you realize there is that we are co-creators with God because God because the story goes on that humans were created in God's image in his in God's likeness well if we're in his likeness then number 1 there's masculine and feminine and we always refer to God as he so we have to deal with that and then the other thing is that if we are co-creators and then in Psalm 82, it says, ye are gods in the King James. You are gods. You are Elohim. I looked it up. So you see how we're standing? If we just use that as a mental metaphor, then we are standing as creating deity, creating ability, creating power. So it's not that we're just suggesting or we're not begging or we're not pleading. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens of the earth. And you go through the, the chapters. What happened? Let there be light. And there was light. Let there be grass and 
trees and stuff. And let there be animals. And there was. See, let there be, I command in the name of. So we're standing with our co-creating ability. Yeah, Brenda, that's exactly. You know, we were just talking about that. They announced it on Monday. And that smoke, by the way, all summer has been blowing by your house every day. Hopefully it's been very diminished. In the name of source, I command the funds to be released from the sale of my home. Yes. Now you feel that, right? Can you feel that? I command the attorneys and the people involved to be trustworthy. I command to live a life of harmony and abundance. These are great. I'll let you guys read them. Yeah, that was very good. Good. I love this. Nice, guys. Nice. This is great. I love it. Yes, let there be. Let there be light. <laughs> if let you put it in the words that light you up. I command is a great one. But look, if you are totally comfortable saying, I am a creator, and what I say is matters, then and let there be light, that's the same as a command, right? In the name of the Most High, in the name of Yahweh, in the name of God, in the name of highest source, in the name of the universe and everything that holds it together, let there be. I have to come over to my iPad. I'm just trying to see who that is, but I can't get it. Oh, there it is. Maybe I can see this. Um, maybe would it be? Oh, no. Okay. Sorry. I'm not going to get hung up on that. All right. In the name of the highest power, I command a wonderful and enlightening journey of getting my, this is the um, professional astrology certificate by the end of the 10th house perfection year. <laughs> <She's> gonna... <laughs> That's great. She's in it right now. So uh, that's awesome. Good. Good for you, Kristen. Good for you. She wants to, she really wants to step into this and we are going to support her in this as well. All right. Now let's talk real quick about clearing our space. So what we did at the beginning and why I'm wearing this funny hat and why we squirted Sage up into the air and everything is that with Melissa's story, there is, um, I think that's indicative, that's illustrative of what all is like the forces that might come against the work that we are doing and the stand that we are making. All right, so look, let's back up. If we are changing frequencies and if we are stepping into a higher consciousness and if things are shifting on the planet, I believe they are. But again, I'm not going to come back to our very first point. We said, I'm not going to sit here and say definitively this or that is happening, but let's just say that it is. And if not, if not, it certainly is stirring as evidenced by that revival in Kentucky. Things are stirring spiritually and so many conscious people have been feeling it to their bones. Okay, just take that. How can we invite that in? Well, the other thing is, one of our people this week, in fact, it was Stevie McGuire, and some of you may have contacted her for a hypnotherapy session. She's still there. She had a personal thing come this week uh, that she had to stop and deal with. What I told her was that, look, when you make a stand that you're going to do something powerful in the world, sometimes there are forces that will come against that. That's one possibility because they don't want you to be positive. They don't want you to have that influence. The other thing is, and I do believe this is true, and this comes from, my, from the Christian teachings, but I think there's merit to this. That sometimes, and I'm going to use the word God, but sometimes spirit 
will also put some pressure on you to see if you are resolved. It's kind of the theme of the book of Job, right? Here was a righteous man who all of a sudden his world falls apart. Now that's an extreme example, but I'm just saying when you're feeling this tension or when these things are coming against you, use it also as a checkpoint. How resolved am I to really live like this? And then the other thing that I think it's real important to do is that we constantly, this is the definition of conscious living, is we stop long enough to go through our world and we look at what is not in alignment with what we want. And Caroline and a couple of others uh, put in here that, um, you know, putting things like environment and putting things in our body and all this. So go from head to toe, go from sunrise to sunset, from waking up to going to bed. Look at your habits. Look at what you associate with, who you associate with, what you watch with your eyes, what you hear with your ears. I told you over the New Year holiday when I was I'd gotten sick when I went down there to Florida for the first couple of few days, a week or so. And I listened to a couple of audiobooks that were just memoirs of Johnny Cash's kids about his life. I grew up loving Johnny Cash when I was a kid. I thought he was great. And here was his daughter and here was his son. And I mean, it was just, I mean, the, 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 that world was a world that I could not relate to. It took me about two weeks to clear that energy. Was it worth listening to? No. I don't watch TV for that reason. It's like I don't fill my mind with that stuff. And when I do, there's a reaction. Um, I went to a restaurant. One of the last times I went to a restaurant, I've been eating at home. I, you know, Food intake is pretty clear of additional stuff. And my, I didn't get sick, but I just felt heavy for about two or three days. Just didn't. Oh, like oh. Um, these are all things. These little things, and I've gotten pretty manic about this. Is the reason I'm saying this. And if this is too much, that's fine. Just somebody drop a chat in there and say, "Stop it, <laughs> Thomas, stop it." But these are things that make the little bit of difference that. Um, can up your game in your spiritual practice and can grease the skids for these things to come in. So how can we say that we are wanting to be powerful co-creators, but we're putting all kinds of obstacles in our way? Some of them are unavoidable. I get it. You work in a toxic environment. Well, okay, then start you know, working on that. Uh, maybe that's changeable. Maybe it's not. Maybe you're supposed to be in that environment. Ask for protection. Guard yourself. Prepare yourself for that. But if it's removable and it's easily removable, then make a commitment to remove it. That's just something that I've been doing a lot. So, um, all right, let's see. Let me catch up with some of your comments here. Brittany, I saw you popped in. Good to see you. Um, yeah, yeah. And I guess, Alyssa, the point here is just be open to always operating at your peak. Yeah. Watching a pretty intense, gruesome show on Netflix. Well, see, that's not who you are. What are you going to say? And what happened? That's exactly it. And I think all these things are portals. See, the, right now, all these portals are open. They're wide open. Maybe, maybe before, maybe a year ago even, maybe five years ago, we would watch that kind of thing. And there really wasn't any effect because the portal, the, the, the veil was not so open. But now it is more open. Yes, and this, I'm glad whoever said this. Who is that? Uh, 
Yeah, Tom. Hey, Tom. Good to see you. Don't obsess over this. Be normal. Be moderate. Be um, with ease, I guess. What's the word? You know, just just be normal. Just just flow with it. Don't be obsessive. Don't be rules based. Oh, don't please don't be rules based. It's that difference of saying, I'm, I want to operate on my highest timeline. But make sure that if you say that, here's the deal. If you say, I want to live on my highest timeline, make sure that the things in your life match that statement or don't make the statement. That's the bottom line. Get real with it enough to be honest to say, no, I really don't want to live my highest timeline. I want to live my 50% timeline because the rest of it, now I'm going to do stuff that doesn't match the high timeline. Just be real with it. Be honest. That's the, that's the most important thing. Okay. Yeah. You know, the other thing, this is good. Uh, if you start into something and it just doesn't resonate, there's an off switch on everything. <laughs> yeah. Flow. Flow. Exactly. Just flow. Don't be rulesy. Uh-uh. That's see, that's going the other way. That's probably down on the lowest end of the timeline. What it is is just saying, I'm in alignment or I'm not in alignment. And if I'm not in alignment, uh, why would okay, let's see. Why wouldn't we want to live on our highest timeline? You, well, because it's kind of tough. I mean, there's a commitment to it, number one. It kind of makes you a in in some ways a little bit of an oddball. Um, you know, socially, for example, um, you know, I say this a lot, but, uh, uh, see, I don't socialize. I'm up here on the side of a mountain in North Carolina. And I've even been thinking about that. I thought, you know, maybe a better place would be where there is more, uh, environment, but when people go out to socialize, often that involves alcohol. Alcohol changes your state. And I'm just, I make no bones about it. I, alcohol, somebody, I saw somewhere, I forget where it was. I wish I'd captured this. I should have screenshot this. But somebody said that alcohol is basically made to keep people numb. Well, there's a conflict because if you socialize or date, you know, people have said, how can I date if I don't drink? That just doesn't work. Um, these are things, these are awkwardnesses. You say, what am I going to choose? I like to socialize. I like to go out with my friends. We all drink. We go to a Mexican restaurant after work on Friday and, and, uh, you know, it's been a tough week. We have a few rounds. Nothing wrong with that. Just what are you choosing? What does it do? Um, these are, I don't know, I don't want to get too much off on this, but, um, so, you know, these are choices. These are the things that I'm talking about. Um, these are great. So, th th you know, when you say, why would we not want to live on our highest timeline? I mean, it takes work. Um, it takes commitment. It's easy to fall back. I mean, it's easy to get to be uh, normal. And, you know, I know we're kind of brushing up against the top of the hour here. Let me just throw one other thing down that is a real motivator for me. Now, this is something that at my end of the timeline of life is becoming more real. And that was Steve Forrest um, talked about in one of the books of, um, that I narrated on his Elements series, where, he, oh, he was it was the Book of Earth. He was talking about Saturn and the second Saturn return. So this is when Saturn has come all the way around. That usually happens the first time in your 29, 29 and a half, 28 and a half sometimes, depending on when you were born and where on the latitude you were born, but in your late twenties, 
And then it happens in your late 50s, just before you turn 60. And he said the second Saturn return is this portal from your adult, your raising your kids, your productive work years and all that to your third third <laughs> of life. Your first third is zero to 30, then 30 to 60, and then 60 to however long you choose, your soul chooses to stay. So um, he said that when you hit that passage, which was for me three, three years ago, three or four years ago, he said, it's when you make the decision of whether you're going to become a grumpy old toot. He used another word, but I'll just say grumpy old toot or a really cool old person. <laughs> I'm like, I want to be a really cool old person. And that's what I'm committed to. Well, what I think now is that every day, every day that I'm alive and I'm doing something to contribute to the environment around me, that I'm laying the groundwork for the completion of this life and for what I will step into when I leave here and what the next life will be like. It's like the building blocks. It's the bricks. It's the roadmap of what I'm going to lay for myself. It's that pay it forward. And that's happening right now. So I get excited about it. So that's a big motivator for me is like, I want to lay the best bricks and the best ground that I can. And it's not out of obligation. I'm not doing it for any other reason than it's just fun. I like thinking about it. I like thinking about my life in that context. The more of you I help, you know, I mean, I've got the abilities. I'm fulfilling a mission. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. How can I get it out more? Highest timeline. You know, to me, that's exciting. Now, to somebody else, that might not. You might say, well, no, I, you know, my, my purpose is building a big company and maybe that is, and that's great. That's great. Do it with all your ability and then support some really good causes with, with all of your profits, you know, just all that. I don't know. Okay. Now let's, let me just to kind of complete this little process. The next thing is to focus on the planet and then a really big manifesting trick, if you will, is to go about your business. So after you have um, created, commanded, invited, said, let it happen, let it be, go about your business. Don't be compulsive. Don't focus on it. In fact, forget about it if you can. And let it come up and surprise you. That's the best way to do it. So I'll tell you what, we have talked a lot. Those of you who want to uh, hang in here, um, let's do a, we'll do a quick meditation. If not, if you have to go, then maybe you can remember or you can go back to the Facebook group or the video on YouTube and you can see who made what comments and uh, stand with somebody in what they are wanting to manifest and repeat it five times. But let's just do a quick version here and then we'll wrap this up. So focus on the one thing, focus on the top thing that you wanted. I don't know if there were some of the multiple creations there. Um, just focus on the one that was your highest priority. We'll take a few minutes to do this. So we're just settling into this meditation. And we'll do this quickly. Focus on that first item, the one that's most important. See it as already happened. Create a little mental movie, mental picture, and see it that that is already in your life. I mean, it's like kind of thinking about yesterday's newspaper. Why am I thinking about that? That's already happened. Think of it as there. Those of you who requested money, see it in your bank account. Those of you who requested relationship changes, see what that looks like. What's the communication look like? What does the healing look like? 
those of you who asked about direction, see the direction having come clear. What would you be doing? You get the idea. And then feel it. Just take a moment to feel the emotion. Hopefully it feels really, really good. <laughs> That's the most important part right there. Don't do stuff that doesn't make you feel good. And then put it into your words. I am so happy and grateful that dot, dot, dot. In the name of the Most High, in the name of the universe, in the name of highest source. I like that one a lot. I use that one a lot. In the name of highest source, I command that Lord Jupiter, that Lord Jupiter's new family fall into my lap in a fast and easy way. In the name of the Most High, I command that the new owners of Lord Jupiter will enjoy it more than I did. In the name of the Most High, I command that Lord Jupiter command the price needed to facilitate the sale. And let it be for all of us. And now, very quickly, thank Source. Thank you for the privilege of co-creating this reality. And so it is. It is done. Creators don't beg. <laughs> it is done. All right, now let's shift focus. That's done. Process complete. You can drag that out more when you're doing this in meditation. I like to really feel it. I like to be descriptive and get more into it, but for the sake of time. Now, think of somebody else who requested something and stand for theirs. I'm going to stand for Brenda, the sale of the house. Release the money. And definitely that people buck the trend and actually be honest and integrous in her dealings. Ah, what a bright spot. There's no other option. But I'm standing, Brenda, for your reality. Alyssa, I'm standing for your direction. Melissa, I'm standing for your relationship and for your new opportunity. And by the way, everybody, every one of us should be looking at one or two or three new additional income streams. Sarah, I'm standing for your new venture. <laughs> These are powerful. Stand for, stand for others. See, we shift our focus. We're not thinking about ours anymore, are we? Arnaldo, I'm so sorry. The time change. Oh, hit the replay, buddy. We'll see you next week. I'm so sorry. Oh.
These are great. Um, and then let's just thank Source for <laughs> this really cool ability that has been so masked and hidden by our culture, our social culture, our political culture, our religious culture. This is living consciously. This is living consciously, what we did tonight. You examine your life. You align. Where am I in alignment? Where am I not? You change what needs to be changed. This is constant. This isn't one time. This is not what you do on New Year's Eve. This is what you do. I do it in that chair over there every morning when I get up. I catch myself when I'm not in alignment with something, with a reaction, and I flip it. I don't beat myself up for it. I do the 180. Ah, that's not how I wanted to respond. How am I going to respond next time? I game plan what I'm going to be doing next time. I get it in my mind. I forgive myself. If I need to apologize to somebody, I do. And then I move on. Not a big deal. When I eat too much, I look at the circumstances around it. Maybe I was just freaking hungry. I'm like, okay, you know what? You need a, another lap around the lake. Do something to offset it but I don't beat myself up, but I do game plan. What's my eating going to look like tomorrow? Et cetera. And I just think all the time. I mean, I have it in my mind that um, I'm living my highest timeline. I have it in my mind. It's imprinted. So, yeah, guilt is a bad vibe. <laughs> no guilt. Look, we're on a journey. We're not following a rule book. You know inside. You know inside if it's... <laughs> I saw your post on that this afternoon, Sarah. Hold me accountable. You made it. Yay. Um, no, it's, you know, we're on a journey. And what we say, enjoy the journey, right? Enjoy it. All right, this has been great. Thank you guys for hanging in there. Wow, a lot of you have stayed stayed uh, stayed put. So, um, thank you so much. I hope this has been helpful. Darren says it ha it has been for sure. So, thank you for that encouragement. And uh, the replays obviously will be in on Facebook. And um, ah, here we go. Okay, good, Alyssa. Thank you. So here we go. Let's look at it. Thank you for sharing your energy and manifestations so openly. Yes. This is the circulation. This is where we're standing for each other. If anyone wants a Tuesday night meditation, Alyssa is doing this at 8.30 Eastern on YouTube under Meditative Astrologer page. Um, I feel odd dropping this, but as suggested. Don't feel odd. Invited. I want people to know about this. Um. The comments, yes, will appear on the replay. Yes, they will appear on the replay. No, you know, this is part of the community. Uh, this is all exactly what we're doing here together is supporting each other. We're, we're raising each other up and rising each other up. So those of you who are really stepping into uh, creative work like this, <laughs> I want you to leave that up so you can catch what that is. 8.30 on Tuesday on Meditative Astrologer. I am so early to bed now that uh, I'll have to try to pop in on that. But uh, uh, I don't know how long I can make it. But um, those of you who are doing spiritual work, I really want to do everything I can to help you. That's in my chart. That's part of connecting with my purpose. 
So it's uh, not only to keep the stuff going that's going, add a few things to it. Robert Glasscock and I, by the way, those of you into astrology, we are in the process of putting together a nine-part horary astrology class. Mm -hmm. We are. In fact, those of you who want to stick around, I will show you the horary chart. I think I can do this. I'll show you the horary chart that I cast for the van, should I sell the van. So, um, good. <laughs> when Alyssa came to our October trip, we just had our first little get together and I, um, I, I'd always, I've, I've been wanting to meet Alyssa and I just observed and I looked at her and I said, you're an old soul, aren't you? She kind of laughed and, you know, probably caught off guard a little bit. And she said, well, yeah, maybe I've kind of thought about that. She has a lot of wisdom. She has a lot of wisdom. So thanks, Sarah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, if a couple of you want to stick around, I will show you that horary thing, but we are putting a horary class together. So anyway, I'm just here to help those of you who want to um, move into other areas in your life of spiritual work that when things fit and when there's a match, if I have an ability to help you, I'm all about it. So i um, happy to announce that, Alyssa. Let me just see if this van thing pulls up right here. Yes, it does. And if I go over here. No, I don't want to do that. Here's what I want to do. No, hold on. I never changed this. So here, here, present, share screen. Uh, window. Got it. There. Wow. Cool. Okay. So here's the horary class. Here's the horror. This is this is the technique, but this is what I did that um, we are going to explain. And this first seg the first segment that Robert and I recorded this week, he goes through this in so much detail. Your jaw will be on the floor. And I'll tell you, whether you like Robert or not on the podcast, he is a different Robert teaching. He is so in his zone. It's just absolutely amazing. But when you ask the chart a question, first of all, you have to decide, is this question one that is worth taking out to space time? And he goes into what space time is and why it's important to think this way in that first segment. And... Um, it has to be important enough that you're going to ask the universe to give you an answer, to pontificate, to give you guidance and direction. The other thing I always say is, if you're going to ask, be ready to do what it says. Don't dabble with this. Because you are asking God you, to show you. I mean, the, the stars, the heavens are in place to show you direction. So, yes, then you have certain things that you have to look at the chart to see if that chart can be read at that time. And it was readable. This chart was readable. Then you locate the house or you, before you cast the chart, you determine what house is this going to show up in? Well, this is purely a transportation related question. I am asking, should I sell the van or should I keep the van? It's purely about vehicles, which is ruled by, the third house. So we have, uh, here's the first house, second house, third house. And in this chart, so, so then we're going to, so we look, here's the third house. Here's the beginning of the third. There's no planets in there, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. What we're going to do is find the planet that rules Leo. That's the sign for Leo. And that planet is the sun. And then we look at the opposite house because that's the indicated answer. This is the question. This is the answer. And that is Aquarius, which is ruled by in ancient astrology. We start with that. Saturn. And you look at where they are relative to each other. They are in a sign-based conjunction. You look at the sign. 
not the degrees in horary astrology. You can move within the whole sign for the answer. So the fact that they are 17 degrees apart in this case doesn't matter. They still are both in Pisces. They are together. And in horary terms, a conjunction is a yes answer. So I stated my question out. I wrote it out before I did it. I do that every time just because you sometimes go back and you think, now, what is that? And you start fudging with your question. My question was, should I sell the van? Pure and simple, yes or no? And the answer to this was yes. And then you can go on and read several other things into this, but um, that, was, that was how that question worked. So we are going to be um, showing you how to do that on even very complicated questions. And it's an amazing process. So um, I can't either, Kristen. <laughs> I can't wait either. So, all right. Well, this has been great. Thank you for sticking around a little bit extra. I actually came in tonight thinking this was going to be shorter. But uh, this is what Level Up will turn into. So what we'll do in the future is we'll get quicker into the meditation part. We'll go through listing our manifestations. So now everybody knows to come prepared with those. You'll have them already. You'll have them written out or however you capture them. And we'll put them in. We'll read through. And uh, we'll stand for each other. And then we'll compare notes. So the other piece of the homework for next week is when something manifests, if you're in the Facebook group, drop it in there. I want to hear about those of you who have something show up. Please do put it in there. We want to celebrate that. So we'll do a little celebrating next week because we'll have people who will have stuff that has happened. And then we'll get right into it. And I'm expecting that maybe we can have these done in about 45 minutes. That would be the idea. All right. I love you so much. Thank you for sharing this time. Thank you for being here. You are amazing. And let's go out and stand in firm, high ground and create our world this coming week. I'll see you next Sunday night.